Hi, I'm Ebonique, the founder of Budget Collector, a new company dedicated to developing new collectors like me and hopefully you. Um, today, I'm going to attempt to take someone's thesis and make it into a YouTube video. Um, this is all sorts of wrong, but hopefully a little bit right. So, Anissa Tav, um, at Anissa Tav, had a fascinating Instagram post on how museums uphold white supremacy. Um, and just a tiny little side note, most of my videos are started from some Instagram posts, so um, at me, at Ebonique Boyd with ideas, and I will probably make a video because I am liking my YouTube community and I love all of my subscribers, and I thank you so much for supporting my weird ideas and things. So thank you, subscribers, and um, follow my me on Instagram if you want. I don't post, so <laughs> I stalk. So let me stalk you and um, at me and follow me and I'll stalk you too. So anyway, I wanted to dedicate a moment to her ideas. That was more than just liking her post. Um, she was on full attack mode on the Metropolitan Museum of Art this week and I was here for all of it. Sipping tea. All loving it. So, Anissa Tavangar broke down the history of the museum. She says, the foundations of primitivism, from the imperialistic acquisitions of the objects to the name of their original museum, to the original name of the department, are all clear. She adds um, that the arrangement of the wing is a blatant upholding of white supremacist ideals, of anti-blackness, and anti-indigenity, excuse me. She adds the grouping of three regions of the globe, each divided by entire oceans, makes no coherent sense. She continues, display practice crowded cases, low lighting, vague and generalized descriptions, communicate to the audience a lack of distinction between objects. At the end of her post, she asks, what is the solution to the colonialist museum frameworks? She answers, I don't know. And I, since this is my YouTube channel, I'm definitely going to just spew out what I think, what I, what I believe. And um, so I think the Rockefellers donated their capital to develop this white supremacist ideal and um, it's up to us to stop partaking in it, you know, stop del washing ourselves in white supremacy and reject museums like this to the fullest. Um, and also I, I would argue that if you are um, considering buying art um, donate to them when they're vulnerable because that's exactly what Rockefeller did and that's how she outlined it within her thesis was, you know, how the Rockefellers were able to reshape the department in their own perspective of what Africa was and what um, Central America was and what Asia was. They were able to group that and come up with a a narrative that is just furthered through their donation. So if you do have some capital to spend, um, I would argue to do the same, um, but for a different, for a different goal to promote anti-racism. Um, that's what I would argue for. And then I, I was going to say something about how other stuff, but I'm just tired, I guess. I'm even tired of having to speak about this. 
I don't know why I should, I don't know. And I'm kind of confused. I've been, my next video I'm trying to plan is, I wanted to do on stolen artifacts. I saw this fascinating um, video, which I will surely put in a clip here. Uh, Entre, c'est écrit même devant ce musée. Attends, Entre 1880 et 1960. Voilà, c'est vous maintenant qui empêchez l'Afrique de récupérer ses biens. Donc vous êtes en complicité avec Macron. Vous êtes en complicité attends, avec la France. Attends, vous êtes en attends. complicité avec l'Allemagne. Vous êtes en complicité avec l'Italie. Vous êtes en complicité avec les États-Unis. Alors laissez-moi, je rentre à la maison avec ces qui m'apportent. Ne me touchez pas. I'm trying to do something more in stolen artifacts and there's just so much to say and so much to absorb and for a plebe like me I'm not sure I'm at all competent to do that but you've you know if you've seen if most of my subscribers came from my history video that I did for one of my Howard classes um and so I'm sure you'll enjoy it at once I put it together, but um, it's just so much stolen, you know, sometimes it's, I'm just, I just feel like I'm in a, my mom always laughs, so I'm all, I smile when I'm upset, like a, a coping mechanism from so much campaigning is like, you see so many, so much disturbing things and then just learn how to smile softly and back away um and so now I just smile when I'm hurt but I'm honestly hurt and triggered and I can't help but stop smiling because it's what you know it's what's my coping mechanism for years is to smile through the pain um but it hurts to see so many stolen works and just to think about in comparison you know when Hitler stole from the Jews, it seemed like there was more of an effort, a global effort to return the works. But when people steal from Africa, is there any, is there any effort? And especially when it's Hitler, Hitler himself stealing from Africa and there's no effort to return and stealing it from people's graves. It's just kind of like out of this world. So that's what my next video is going to be about. I'm it's probably going to, I'm obsessed with Hitler. Um, it's just a weird period of time when there was so much hatred and people were just okay with it. And that's just, um, one of my closest friends recommended I, I read Hannah Arant's On the Banality of Evil. And that was like a life-changing book for me on how you know how slowly evil creeps in um and how you and just the period just studying hitler and around that time it's just it's like studying pure evil and what evil will do um so i do enjoy it so i i mean you don't enjoy studying evil but you I, I enjoy learning about it because it makes me understand the context of how to um, not not be evil. You know, you have to learn what evil is to not be evil, I guess, to not fall into the same, those same traps. Um, and because it's, it is so close, you know, like it's, Slow, it's a slow, slow, steady process to get to that. And so anyway, I'm probably, my next video ideally will be about Hitler and Nefertiti. Um, I was looking at different stolen artifacts and since there's so many and I was just so overwhelmed with how, you know, delving into the role, uh, the world of stolen artifacts from Africa and um, Central America and Asia, I was so overwhelmed with how many stolen artifacts there were that I had to just choose one so I could just delve into it and make a, you know, a 10, 
minute video or so on it. Um, I didn't want to be too broad, but I just wanted one. And the one that I actually saw, I saw Nefertiti's bust when it came here to America. Um, and it was quite beautiful. Um, and I'm glad that I saw it, but I wish I would have seen it when I was in Egypt. You know, like it might have been a better, had a better context there. Um, better understanding then it's just I'm just incredibly sad anyway um please like and subscribe for the, so that put the notification bell on so that you'll get this Hitler video on why he kept Nefertiti bust um and why he refused to return to Egypt if he's so much into the superiority of German Germanic people. Like, why was he obsessed with these African art pieces? So I'll delve into it and you'll see my face smiling, but I'm not dying secretly in the inside. Um, okay. Anyway, thanks for watching and yeah, like, subscribe and buy my book. Bye.